everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to do a little bit of a costuming plans update video with you. I think the last one of these that I did was about six months ago and some of the plans obviously have already been completed because I think I actually completed most if not all of the plans kind of that were meant to happen in the intervening months since then so that's cool. But obviously I have a whole lot of new plans too and some of the plans for like that were farther in the future from the last video have changed and I want to talk with you about all of the plans, show you all of the fabrics because I do already have most of these fabrics and just kind of give you a little update on everything. So Emerald City Comic Con is over. You've already seen that video that came out last week. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below. But that means that I can kind of turn my attention now back to historical sewing as opposed to cosplay sewing. Yes, I know most of my cosplays are historical, but I'm talking about non-cosplay historical sewing. And that means that the first event that is coming up is the Port Townsend Victorian Festival, which is happening the last weekend of April. I will link the Victorian Festival information down below in the description in case you are also interested in attending. I have gone every year except for last year that they have held it since I think 2014 was the first year that I went and I mean it's different every year and honestly most of what I go for is just kind of the atmosphere of lots of people being dressed up in a cute Victorian town that is beautiful. This town is absolutely beautiful, perfectly situated like along the water etc. And my friend Emily aka the Sucky Seamstress is actually hosting a bonus ball this year on the Friday that leads into the Victorian festival that is going to be 1890s themed but more on that in a moment. So first off I'm actually going to be spending my Saturday of the Victorian Festival wearing entirely 1830s. Most of what I'm wearing is stuff that I already have. I'm going to be wearing my springtime pink and green plaid look with a giant pink bonnet. I'm going to be wearing that for the daytime on Saturday and then I'm going to be participating in the fashion show wearing my very old 1830s archery dress but I wanted a new gown for the evening. They do a contra dance in the evening. And so I am actually reworking an older gown into an evening gown. This video will be out next week, but it's already partially in process because I've taken some of the stuff off, like the sleeves. So this is the gown. This is going to be turning into an evening gown. It's going to look like this when it is finished because I found this fashion plate that just seemed pretty perfect for what I had going on and how I could easily, or at least fairly easily, change that over. So that's something in progress already. Again, you will be seeing that video next week. But for Friday night for the ball, again, that's gonna be 1890s themed. So this extant dress right here, this is something that I've had on my to make list for a very, very long time. And when I was at Costume College last year in the LA Fabric District, I found this beautiful, I think it's actually a Shantung, possibly a Dupioni, but beautiful silk that is slightly more purple than the fashion plate, but I figured it was quite close. It would work pretty darn well. And what I'm actually going to be doing is I am, obviously this is a day dress and I'm making an evening dress, but actually I'm going to attempt to make the bodice convertible. So obviously we all know that a lot of Victorian outfits would have a day bodice and an evening bodice, but I really, really like the elements of this day bodice. I don't know that I have enough fabric or time to make an entirely different bodice. So what I'm planning to do with this bodice right here is to hopefully make it so that I can kind of either snap in hook in etc maybe just like whip stitch in the neckline area that is the high neckline and instead for evening have kind of a low more boat like filler that will just fill in the bottom of the v area and then the sleeves that are at the bottom will again also be stitched and snapped in etc so that it could be a short sleeve look for the evening and just have those shorter big puffed sleeves so that is my plan with this fabric and that is going to obviously be up next because i need that finished by the end of april once that's done, I plan to give myself kind of just a quick break from historical sewing because I want to make myself a new summer dress that is like vintage inspired, like 1950s inspired, or actually possibly 60s inspired. Because frankly, this fabric reads super, super 60s to me. This is actually a really old sheet set that my parents had like forever. Honestly, it might have even been my grandparents. And there's a ton of yardage here, so I almost feel like I'm wasting it on doing 
a non-historical dress because there is frankly enough yardage to become a historical dress but I don't know what this would be as historical like I mean the closest thing that I could think of for this sort of a pattern fabric pattern for this much yardage would be like a 1960s like long floor length type gown but I don't need that and that's not practical for me what I need are more cute summer type dresses I mean okay you're right I don't need them but that's what I want to make and that would be practical for me so that's the plan with this I am going to turn these panels of sheet set etc into a cute summer dress that is vintage inspired and at that point it will be time to dive into costume college sewing so I have recently decided and I know that this is probably a silly idea but the gala theme for costume college this year is Bridgerton. Now Regency is all fine, like Bridgerton's all fine, whatever those, they're fine. Like I have a Bridgerton dress, it's fine. But what they should have been wearing in at least the first season of Bridgerton when they were presented at court for Queen Charlotte is of course the amazingly ridiculous Regency English court gown. Now, if you are not familiar with the English Regency court gowns, I've actually done an entire video on them. So I will link that up here and then down below in the description as well so that you can go check that out. But these are absolutely ridiculous fashions. They were so ridiculous that not a single extant English Regency court gown exists because all of their wearers probably went and like had these gowns made so they could be presented at court because the requirement was that you had to wear hoops even though this was the Regency period like they didn't do hoops so they had to wear hoops so they had their dressmakers make these gowns and then as soon as they were presented at court they probably sent that dress back to the dressmaker and were like okay now change this into something that I can actually wear in real life as opposed to at court and so all of those dresses were probably remade into something else because of the copious amounts of fabric now the copious amounts of fabric is kind of where we run into a little issue here because I was really hoping that I could make this out of fabric from my stash but as it turns out I don't really have much if any appropriate fabrics that are in my stash like I don't have just yards and yards of silk that are appropriate for this kind basically you know solid colors or stuff like that that I could work with I've got a lot of like plaid and gingham silk because I'm drawn to that and I'm finding that that is not what I need for this sort of a situation so one of my ideas we do also see Regency court gowns that look like this which are a bit more like your typical Regency style idea concept etc but put over hoops and so something that I have had earmarked honestly for an early bustle gown but it's this embroidered cotton and I was thinking like it's possible that I could do this sort of thing or I could just go with like dead dino etc and find what I can find that's like on the cheap um, or maybe that's secondhand or something like that but I think it would be really fun to do a Regency court gown so although I don't have the concept nailed down yet and it's going to depend on fabric because I don't have the fabric yet or at least probably don't have the fabric yet that is my idea for costume college gala. The other outfit that I would like to make for costume college but may not be able to happen in time is that I would like to make Rose's boarding suit. I'm giving myself a little break from Titanic before diving back in but I do finally have the fabrics now so that is fantastic and yeah we are going to or at least we're planning to go to the Queen Mary I think right before costume college again and it would be really cool to be able to wear her boarding suit on the Queen Mary and get those like awesome pictures and everything on a ship so I would like to make it but it is not a big deal if I run out of time I can always make it for next year maybe both for like comic-con and well even though my rose outfit wasn't very appreciated this year at comic-con who knows maybe this one would be more appreciated um, but I could make it for comic-con and or also for costume college next year so not a big deal if I don't get to it but I'm hoping that I will have time to do this before costume college except of course costume college is two weeks earlier this year so there's a little bit less time to actually sew things for costume college so post costume college again because there is more time I have a couple of ideas that are swirling around in my head uh, but I don't want to burn myself out by like absolutely committing to any of these ideas so there are three ideas that I have 
one of which is every August this year they've expanded into July but uh, that time of year the Washington Midsummer Ren Fair happens here it's our only Ren Fair well actually Heard there's a new one starting in Woodby Island now this year but in the past it's been our only Ren Faire in this area and I have been wearing my Elizabethan kirtle there for a very long time like every year I just I wear that and I wouldn't mind something new to wear so there's a possibility that I could make something new however that era really just never draws me in that's why I don't make stuff from that era so although I definitely could use something of that era I don't know if I'll actually make something new or not, but that's something that I could really use. Like that would be handy. Um, another project, if I do not use that embroidered cotton for the court gown, I still have been wanting to make a new really early bustle gown that is out of that fabric. So that is a possibility. However, I really want to make myself a new crinolette before I do that. And I just don't know that I would have enough time before diving into like fall slash Halloween sewing to actually accomplish both the crinolette and the dress in that like time slot. So yeah, I'm not sure if I would want to do that or not. The third option and the one that I'm honestly the most excited about is a another bustle dress because you know me I love bustle dresses because I got this fabric recently I showed this to you guys a few videos ago in a haul video but I got this fabric from Burnley and Trowbridge and I absolutely love it it is a silk taffeta fabric and I happened to have other coordinating fabrics in my stash that would go super nicely with it and I think it would make the most glorious like 1870s just kind of as we go into natural form like 1875 76 etc bustle gown something kind of like this and yeah I think that would be really really fun so that honestly is the one that I'm most excited about as a potential like late July into August type project so we'll see if that happens but that's kind of what's on my mind right now but I am also really excited for fall sewing. I always love fall sewing. And I got this cotton voile. It's a black cotton voile last year. And I still don't know 100% what I want to make from it. I'm trying to show you guys kind of the, the sheerness here. I don't know if that's coming off. But I am not 100% what I want to make from it. I definitely want to make something from it this year. And it is going to be one of two items. I am leaning towards a black chemise a la rain because I think that those look so beautiful. I would probably do the kind with the fitted back because I like that better and I did make myself like a regular chemise a la rain years and years and years ago like literally 2011 like my first year of costuming uh, but I didn't love just how poofy it was everywhere. I didn't think it was the most flattering so I think I would want to make a fitted back version and one that probably has structure underneath the gathers in the front as well and I think that this black cotton wall would be absolutely beautiful and it would be wonderfully spooky and I just think that would be so fun. So yeah that is my plan for kind of the first fall sewing slash Halloween sewing part. One other plan that my friends and I had been talking about for Halloween itself. Now these are largely non-costuming friends, but this year we did this weird, I can't call it a tradition, although now we actually have done it kind of for two years, but we have done this tradition, both this year and last year in fact, of watching the Halloween scenes from Meet Me in St. Louis on Halloween, like at a Halloween get together. And then this year we also watched the Christmas scenes at Christmas time which is a cute tradition and so at Halloween we were talking about oh we should dress up next year as characters from the scene and so the one honestly that draws me in is Rose another another redhead Rose even but Rose the older sister in the movie she wears this right here this wonderfully like acid green with black and white striped detailing suit it's a 1904 suit because that is when this movie takes place or at least it's, you know, the 1940s version of a 1904 suit. And I think it's so wonderful. However, I don't have the fabrics for it. And I don't know if my friends literally really are intending to do this or not. Or if this is something that was just like a wild hair they got on Halloween. And it's not actually going to happen. So that might happen. It might not happen. But it's a possibility for like an actual Halloween costume this year. And then moving into later fall sewing, I really want to make 
this amazing 1830s police this year. I just absolutely love this. This has been again on my to make list for a very very long time. I found this silk last year at the Fabric District. This is again like a Shantung or Dupioni. It's very similar to the purple fabric but I think it's a nice color. I do still have to get the velvet for it but I think that that will be a really great project that is a good bridge between fall and winter this year um, to make that wonderful velvet and silk police. And then lastly, a project that I thought I had the fabric for, and then I looked through my stash and apparently I don't, for like kind of Christmas time. I don't want to do like the typically Christmas outfit this year. What I want to do is Caroline's Redding Goat from American Girl. I have loved this since I first saw it. I think it is just absolutely beautiful. The blue is stunning. The velvet trim, stunning. I mean, I just absolutely love it. And to go with that, I would also like to make myself a new Regency dress uh, because I've been wearing the same Regency dress to the Washington Regency Society 12th Night Ball for a while now. And I feel like if I'm making, you know, the Redding Goat to go over it, I might as well make myself a new dress as well. So although I don't have the fabrics for any of that yet, um, that is my plan for kind of December, Christmas time, etc. And honestly, I think that's kind of as far out as I want to take myself right now. I don't really want to think about Comic-Con next year yet, other than potentially wearing like Rose's boarding suit. Uh, I do want to do a Barbie dress. So that is something that I, I'm pretty sure I want to do and probably another American Girl dress. Probably not the Redding Goat because that'll be too warm. That's kind of my blue sky plans for next year's Comic-Con. So we'll see what happens there. But I will, of course, do another one of these videos probably in six months or so to update you with further plans, especially after I go to the fabric district and actually get more fabrics. But hopefully you have enjoyed this little plans update video. Let me know your plans down in the comments. Is there anything that you are particularly excited about making this year? Definitely let me know. And in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week, usually with sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and sometimes with additional content out on Saturdays. But I post every day over on my Instagram so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks or join my YouTube channel memberships right here on YouTube below the video. I'd also like to take this time to give a humongous thank you to my absolutely wonderful Patreon patrons. I seriously could not do all of this without you guys. You definitely keep everything going. And in particular, a humongous thank you to my patrons at the Romantic Victoria and Edwardian level tiers, who are Jean, Dan, Audra, Emily, Kim, Deborah, Janet, Liz, Robin, Kimberly, Nurse Anita, Janelle, Chaos Chan, Linda, Jen, and Deco. Thank you all so, so much. And thank you all for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!